gallop. Oh! Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. He alive, Harrison? No, Saeed. Move him back with the others. In the name of heaven, Captain, how could he be alive? Look at him. Move him back, Harrison. Lieutenant Cybertz is directing the grave detail. Now give him a hand. We are gonna bury them all? It's the least we can do. I can't do it, Captain Quince. I can't. I'm all hot and cold in my belly. I just can't look at any more of this. You get a firm grip on that belly of yours, Harrison. This kind of cleanup's got to be done. Now, don't look, don't think, just do your work. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll do that. I'm on my fifth, Captain. All right, Hook. You know, my old ladies, I figured they was too old for travel anyway. See, those graves are cairned. Lieutenant's seeing to that, Captain. All I gotta do is dig them. <sighs> Count 12 wagons burning. Them engines don't leave nothing to chance. No, not much. They shoot them full of arrows, full of lead, then hack them up. For good measure, they set fire to them. Better get back to work, Hook. You're a sight safer in the army than in one of them wagon trains, ain't you, Captain? Sometimes, Hook. Sometimes. Uh, uh, Captain uh, Quinns. Yeah? Maybe you ought to speak to the lieutenant. How's that? <laughs> He's fair carried away with all his burying stuff. I declare he'll be laying the dead stock to rest next so as he can speak words over them. That all, Hook? Well, you ought to take a look, Captain. I think it's real touching. Thinking's not any part of you, Hook, any more than feeling is. I don't want to see that spade of yours stop the next two hours. Yes, sir. Captain Quinn, over here. This one's still alive. You conscious? I just come on him. I heard him. Mister? Uh... So, hundreds, hundreds of so. Must have raided from the south, Hazen. If it was so. I gave the major that report. They've been building up to something for months now. Uh, mister, uh, how many people in your train, mister? We counted 12 wagons. We had 52. 52. And they took... Uh, oh... Only 50 bodies, Captain. Lieutenant Cybers and I just took count. You sure, Hazen? No. Yes, sir. 49 dead in this one. No. Beasley. It, it took the Beasley... Beasley girls. It, it, it took... Make that 50 dead, Hazen. Yeah. You going after him? With 20 men... No, we'll be another couple of hours here, and it'll still take us three more to get back to the fort. Them girls, that's... Well, dying's easier, Captain. You telling me something I don't know, Hazen? Yeah, I'll go after them when I stand a chance of getting them. Meantime, you pick up the trail. Yes, sir. I ought to come on the suit camp before night. If I do, I'll make it back to the fort by daylight. 
I'm going after him at sunup, whether you're back or not. Suppose you had the company with you, then what? We'd have finished our burying a little earlier, Major. That's all? That's all. Captain, I have to make a report to Washington. I'd like to make it look as if the Army meant something out here. So far, I can tell them that a patrol of 20 men arrived in time to bury the members of an entire wagon train. Would it make your report read any better if you told them a whole company arrived in time to bury them, Major? I'm not interested in your impertinence, Captain. I'm not interested in your report, sir. All right, all right. Look, I know you don't think much of paperwork, Lee. Reports to Washington, all this. But the point is, it all has to be done, whether you like it or not. My point is, we'd have been just as late with 80 men as we were with 20. You'd still have to report 50 dead and two missing. I don't like to think about those young women. Somebody better think about them. You've seen what... Well, you know the savagery they're bound to endure. How soon can you leave, Captain? At dawn, whether Hazen's back or not. You sent him on ahead? He's been scouting the Sioux territory for the last few months. If they've gone back south, we'll find them. I suppose you'll want the company this time. I'd want more than one company if I intended to go after him. There's only one company available, Captain. Major, I'd like to bargain with them. Bargain? After a massacre like this? Yes, sir. If we don't have the men to fight it out with them. What kind of bargain? Big Elk. Big Elk for the young women. I don't know. He wasn't easily captured, Quince. I know. I brought him in. Uh, he's not doing us much good lying around the stockade. I suppose the Sioux consider him valuable enough to trade for him. He's a chief. What if Hazen isn't back by morning? If you expect to find those young women alive, you can't wait much longer. We may pick Hazen up on the trail, but Big Elk can lead us to the camp. Yeah, but Willie. To get out of the stockade? Yeah, he'll lead us. He'll understand he's not free till he does. You better talk to him, Quince. Report back to me tonight. I'd like to leave at sunup, sir. If we're satisfied that Big Elk's our best chance, you'll pass the head of your column through the main gates half an hour before Reveille tomorrow morning. Right, sir. in your bunks. Try kill me. I will. I get the chance. Something on your mind, Hook? He's just tormenting him, Captain. Big Elk asked for a drink. Hook here gave him some bilge water. But it wouldn't have killed him. Just made him good and sick like he makes me. You're to leave him alone, Hook. Hey, let them white women alone, Captain. Not one of them engines is leaving them be. You're all hard, aren't you, Hook? Now get back to your quarters, all of you. We're going after the women before Reveille. Tattoo ain't sounded yet, Captain. What did you say, Trooper? Nothing, sir. Come on. Here you are. Here, you can drink this, Big Elk. Uh, white man, no friend. Try kill me. I could have killed you two months ago. I brought you here instead. Now go on, drink it. It's from my own canteen. Oh. Oh. Good, good water. Good water. Put out fire and belly. Your people still hold big camp on Lodgepole Creek? Big Elk no see people many moon. A brother white man only. White man, no brother, Big Elk. The hunting's still good along Lodge Pole. Good grass, good water. Why would they move camp? Not know. If we let you go, Big Elk, you could find your people. Uh, 
Big Elk, big coup for white man. White man no let Big Elk go. Well, if you couldn't find your way back, no sense talking to you. Hey, wait. Why? You don't know where your people are. Why you let Big Elk go? A fair trade. You lead us to the Sioux camp. We'll trade you to your tribe for the white women they have. No trade. Your people don't think much of you, do they? Big Elk hold high honor in tribe. All so proud, warrior, hunter, leader, Big Elk. Then why won't they trade? <laughs> white man no trade Big Elk for white woman. That's just where you're wrong. White men go pretty high on their women folk. Uh, Captain, you play trick? No trick. You have my word. No trick. And Big Elk give word. We'll lead to Sioux camp. You still put a lot of store in that camp of yours, Harrison? You still think he knows all there is that's right? Captain Quince knows what he's about. You see, he does. Kind of gnaws at your innards, though, don't he? Him plain eating out of that engine's hand. You're just trying to rile me, Hook. And I ain't giving you the satisfaction. Look at him, Harrison. The engine pokes his head to the right, we move to the right. Same with the left. He'd poke his head straight up, your old Captain Quince. He'd have us climb in the air. You'd best keep your face shut, Hook. I swear you keep me no telling what I'll do. You'll do like you're told. No more. That Captain tell you'd do anything at all. You'd bust yourself doing it. You're gonna grow up licking boots all the way? I ain't snapping at your bait no more. You can talk all you like, I just ain't listening. I'm just riding along here and I don't even know no dumb trooper named Hook. Ain't just me talking, bootlicker. It don't set well with a single white man riding in this column being led around by no engine. You giving any thought to them white women, Harrison? You ever seen one once the bunch of engines got through with her? Well, we're doing a decent thing, ain't we? We're going after them. No, we ain't. We're just out riding around, Harrison. Following an engine wherever he means to take us. Like as not, he's leading us into an ambush right this minute. I ain't listening to you again, Hook. Ain't hearing a word you say. I tell you one thing, bootlicker. That's a dead engine up there. He don't know it yet. But he's just as dead as he can be. Men, we're about an hour from Bear Creek. There's still daylight enough to see us there. We'll bivouac there for the night. Ryder coming this way, sir. I know, Cybert. I think it's Hazen. With word on the Sioux camp. I'm meaning to make a camp here, are you, Captain? Oh, we're heading to Bear Creek for the night. That's more like it. With water there, grass, natural camp. You just a day out of Fort Laramie? Left the post just at sunup. Made good time. Well, Big Elk's picking the trail. Good job. We're right on the line of the Sioux camp. You leave Bear Creek at sunup, you'll make it to Lodge Pole Creek by mid-morning. Fair enough. You got reinforcements coming? I'm riding in under a white flag. I plan to trade Big Elk for the white women. Oh, might work. I got in awful close. Don't even think they got scouts out. Leastwise, I didn't see any. Any sign of the women? Not likely there would be. No, Captain, the Sioux were looking awful peaceful. For your sakes, I hope they are.
You send for me, sir? Yeah, sit down, Mr. Sabitz. Thank you, sir. What's the, uh, what's the talk among the men? You know the men, Captain, just camp talk. Just camp talk? That's all, sir. Well, that's good. I had an idea maybe feeling was running a little high against Big Elk. Well, it is. You know, men feeling the way they do about the Sioux capturing the white women, they're taking on with him a little. What do you mean? Well, joshing him, making threats, little things. Well, well, for example, he's half starving, I guess, and thirsty, of course. So? Well, they keep putting food and water just out of his reach. And you stood there and let it happen, Mr. Seibertz? Well, sir... Just camp talk, Mr. Seibertz. It's more my fault, Captain. You can't blame the men. I can blame the men, and I can blame you. I gave my word. He broke free! Hold your fire! Don't shoot any of you! Hold your fire! Watch it, Captain! He's coming you away! All right! I go! I go! White man, they try to kill me! Now, nobody's gonna kill you. Now, listen to me! I won't let anyone harm you. Your word no mean much. White man, no honor! Quiet! Quiet, all of you! Quiet! Now, listen to me. And understand me. I don't know what's behind all this, but for your sakes, I'm going to put it down to your feeling for the captured white women. All right, all right, quiet! We'll add to that for now. But I'm not forgetting what happened here. Now use your heads. Big Elk's our best chance to get those women out of the suit camp safely. Maybe our only chance. I gave him my word there'd be no tricks. The stockade's waiting for the next man who abuses him. Any questions? Harrison? Yes, sir? See that there's water and warm food for Big Elk. Right away, sir. Now, any of you get any ideas, I'll be waiting for you. That's all. Dismissed. All right, Big Elk. Captain Quince. I'm sorry, sir. I, I should have stopped all that. Any man could have stopped it, Mr. Seibertz. But being an officer and all, I should have. The Army saw fit to make you an officer, Mr. Seibertz. Being a man is entirely up to you. I... I just didn't... That's all, Mr. Seibertz. <laughs> No. Camp of my people in valley below. Big Elk, keep word. Big Elk, if, if I had a home like that, I'd never leave it. Red men first here. Then white men come with gun. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll take the flag, Mr. Seibertz. You have your orders? Yes, sir. We'll ride in under your cover. There's to be no firing unless there's trouble. If I drop the white flag, that'll be your signal to open fire. Any questions? No, sir. Then pass the word. Big Elk and I are riding in. Good luck, Captain. You lead, Big Elk. Uh. No sign of your scouts yet. Uh, my people expect no trouble. There'll be no trouble. Big help turned back on white men. Not safe. No trust. I've kept my word, Big Elk. The rest is up to your chiefs. No. Big Elk knows fear. Oh, you're safe with me. No. Uh, big Elk, no trust. He's straight. You crazy yeah. fool, stop it! Stop! Yeah. Stupid murdering swine. Move out! Move out! 
to save your filthy hides. It was Hook shot him, sir, before anyone could stop him. He'll rot in the stockade for this. Stand the horse! Stand the horse! <laughs> Lieutenant Cybert, move yes, the sir. company back immediately. <laughs> I know how you feel, Captain, but it's done. The man will be dealt with fully. Major, it was the coldest kind of murder. You're lucky you get out of there alive, especially you. Right now, I'm thinking about those white women. I don't think there's a chance they're alive now. The Sioux will take this out on somebody, and they're handiest. We can't think about that. We're going after those women this time with every man in our command. With at least a thousand Sioux at Lodgepole Creek? We'll do our best, Captain. Uh, if Gorse had been with me, I'd have seen this since. Sergeant Gorse was accompanying the first wagon train through. I know that. It's my own stupidity. Stupidity? Surely you're not blaming yourself. For taking hook on that patrol, you bet I am. I'm long enough in the Army to spot a troublemaker. You're not thinking straight, Lee. I count on your judgment because it's cool and straight. You're no good to me in this turn of mine. Major, my guts are crawling now. What do you want? I want an officer with head enough to command Company B to engage the Sioux. All right, sir. You got one. I'm all right. Captain Matheson moved into the post yesterday with C Company. With Meade's infantry and howitzers, we should give you the cover you need. I'm not used to this much support, Major. Might get lost in that crowd. Your job is to get those women and get out. After your initial charge, the main fighting's up to C Company and the infantry. Yes, sir. Get the women, bring them here. And you'll stand by as reinforcements for Matthewson and Meade. Right. Yes? Major? Come in. Captain? Hazen? We're going to need your help, Hazen. Well, there's a chance you can surprise them. They're on the move. Which way? North and to the west. Where's your map? Uh, right here. Yeah. This was their main camp at Lodgefall. Uh-huh. Now, they moved along the valley where you were, Captain, along the stream and then up to Horse Creek there, then branched up to Bear Creek near Iron Mountain right there. We bivouacked there. You were a little to the east, but no matter. They moved across to Chugwater along here, see, and followed along the Laramie Range there. A whole lodgepole camp on the move? All of them. But this is where I think you can get them. If it's still the Beasley girls you're after. They're our first objective. All right. The warriors, the main force of the tribe, they're well up front, moving ahead. They're not expecting any trouble from the rear. And so that's where they got their squaws and old folks and young'uns. Yeah, likely the Beasley women are back there with them. It's a near cinch. Uh, where are they now, in your judgment? The natural camp spot's about there, on the Laramie River. Moving slow like they got to along that range, they should make camp there tonight. If it was me, I wouldn't wait for sunup to move in. He's right, Major. Can you have B Company ready to move out by dusk? I can. Pass the word, Captain. Report back in half an hour. Matthewson and Meade will be here. We'll lay out a full plan. Right, sir. <laughs> Mr. Syberts? Right here, Captain. Men filed out in position? Yes, sir. As ordered. Harrison, move up. Yes, sir. Harrison, you'll flank me on the charge. We're going to bring those women out, you understand? I sure do, sir. Good. Proud to. Company! Company! At the truck! Captain, 
They're running for cover, sir. We stampeded their horses. They gotta take cover. Meade's infantry. We're covered, sir. Yeah, Mr. Seibert. Keep at them. Harrison, over here, this way. The lodges, over here. There's a squaw, Captain. I'll get her. No, no kill squaw. The white women, where are they? No white woman, no kill squaw. Now, where are they? In lodge, there. All safe, no kill. This way, Harrison. Harrison! Captain Quince, it's them women, them Beasley girls. Why, they can't be over five, six years old. Either one of them. I know. Come on, Harrison. Let's get these women out of here. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles, Harry Bartell, Sam Edwards, Lawrence Dobkin, Lou Krugman, James Nusser, and Lillian Bayev. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. The groups which you support through Easter Seals duplicate the work of no other groups, yet there are more than 1,600 of them. These Easter Seal societies serve the many unmet needs of the crippled. This year, the national goal is $12 million. If your family has received a quota of seals in the mail, send your money in the return envelopes which came with the seals. Or if you wish to contribute directly, send your money to crippled children care of your local post office. This has been a public service message from CBS Radio. 